What up HyperChange, welcome to another episode. Today I'm gonna walk you guys through an updated version of my Tesla model. Now that Q3 2017 earnings are out, we got some more color on when Model 3 deliveries are gonna ramp. I thought it was a perfect time to update my model. Besides, I made it like 10 times simpler because I thought it was way easier to understand this way. So I wanna show you guys that and let's walk through it. Welcome to Excel or Google Drive world. We are here looking at the updated version, my 11-7 2017 Tesla's operating model. This is taking into account the Q3 earnings they just reported. And just to show you guys, this is the initial Tesla model I did about a month ago, um, where I tried to break down and model why I think the company could be worth a couple hundred billion in a few years based on a transition in 2022 or 2023 to being a, an autonomous ride hailing company, getting a bunch of revenue from the Tesla network. This was great and I think it's cool to run through this, no, no harm done, but it's just so complicated predicting things out till 2022 or 2023 and when Tesla will actually be able to ramp its autonomous network. It's impossible, I thought it was too much work, so I wanted to make a new kind of rule where I streamline things, simplify it down, only look two to three years in the future, really trying to hammer out what the business is looking like today and how it's gonna evolve in the near term, not trying to get too ahead of myself, and beyond that, just predicting the entire transition. I mean, Tesla's kind of a unique company here, predicting the entire transition to when regulators will allow autonomous taxis to when Tesla will actually perfect the technology is such a guessing game that I don't think it's worth modeling and valuing the company based on that yet, although it's great to keep in the back of your mind. So that's why I've done this much, much simpler model here, and I'm hoping this will break things down a lot easier for you guys to understand. So as you can see, 2015 and 2016, these are the actual numbers that Tesla has reported on a gap basis from their SEC filings, and these are what I have going on for 2017, 2018, and 2019. So I think it's important to note that 2017 is already three quarters done. So there's not too much guesswork involved here. We kind of already know what the, the year is going to look like. Um, a lot of the more guesswork is in 2018 and 2019. This year I have Tesla growing revenue 68% to 11.8 billion. Just to give you guys a little bit more color on what's going on there with revenue, this is my really simple back of the napkin math calculation on how much revenue their auto business is getting. And just to put things in perspective, before I was calculating the leasing revenue and doing all this and doing all this kind of like extra stuff, see like I had, you know, leasing revenue, service revenue, mo revenue by car, that was all great, but I, I just wanted to simplify it and make it way easier to understand. So I took Tesla's total automotive revenue, which is their revenue from automotive sales, outright auto revenue, um, leasing revenue and service revenue, which also includes other, but who cares? So I'm putting that all into auto revenue now. And then I took the amount of cars Tesla delivered in 2015 and 2016 to get the average revenue per car. And you might be saying like, oh, why does that look different? Now remember, this is not the same as this average selling price that they're selling their cars at because this includes things like lease revenue, which is a little bit delayed, service revenue, which is also not correlated to when people are buying the vehicle. So it's not a perfect proxy, but I think it's great to get a ballpark of how much revenue Tesla can do based on how many vehicles they deliver. So as you can see, I'm estimating they're gonna deliver 110,000 units this year with an average revenue per car of 97,000. You may be saying like, whoa, that's a really high average revenue per car, why is it up so much? Well, through the first three quarters this year, Tesla's doing an average revenue of over $100,000 per car with the Model 3 coming online, um, I just figured that that could decline a little bit to 97,000, so I think that might be conservative, but that's how I get to this 10.6, 10.7 billion in auto revenue for 2017, which if you'll go here is right there. Then energy revenue has been about 800 million. Um, actually, let me pull up Tesla's Q3 shareholder letter so I can show you guys where I'm getting these numbers from. Awesome. Now we are in Tesla's Q3 2017 shareholder letter, which has all the financials. As you can see, energy revenue is 818 million for the first nine months of this year, it was 317 million or 318 million last quarter alone. I'm projecting for the full year, they're due 1.1 billion. So that implies only about $280 million worth of energy revenue in the last quarter of this year. Why do I think that energy revenue is going to decline from this number? Well, because part of their energy revenue from Solar City is derived on how much energy people are producing in the winter. There's less sun, less energy from that and I just wanted to be conservative, so I did 1.1 billion in energy revenue. These numbers look like they don't matter, but this 27.5% is indicative of what Tesla's gross margin on energy revenue has been for the first three quarters of this year. I plugged in 25% of my model to take into account weaker gross margins in Q4 and also just being conservative. Tesla's gross margin of their auto business, service, leasing, other, has been 20.3%. 
36% through the first three quarters of this year. I have it dropping to 19% for the whole year, coming in just, you know, more issues with the Model 3 this quarter. They're still gonna see hurting gross margins from Model S and X this quarter. So just wanted to be conservative all around here. So just giving you guys a little more background on the gross margin numbers that I come up with. And so if we if we see how this all translates, Tesla is having a huge jump in its SG&A and R&D expenses this year as well, which are growing much faster than their gross profit. Part of the reason that you're seeing this go on right now is Tesla absorbed Solar City in very late 2016. So we only saw a fraction of Solar City's expenses on Tesla's income statement in 2016, but in 2017 they had to bear the full brunt of Solar City's operating expenses. Even with this massive inclusion of Solar City, I've kind of extrapolated linearly what that would do to Tesla's SGNA and R&D. I think these are probably aggressive assumptions and they could spend less than this, but who knows? I'm trying to be conservative here. Anyway, sorry, getting back to 2017, the operating margin I'm looking at is 12.7%. They're gonna lose 1.5 billion. To put things in perspective, that's their loss from operations. They've already lost 1.03 billion. They lost almost half a billion last quarter alone. So I'm saying they're gonna lose about 400 million next quarter, or maybe even, actually no, about another half a billion next quarter. That's what the Model 3 struggles, and that'll get their loss to 1.5 billion. Now this looks bad, but you know, I'm expecting this. They're ramping production like crazy. Revenue's growing 68% this year. The losses are big, but that's all gonna change next year. So quickly to give you guys background on my assumptions for 2018, I'm looking at 300,000 cars delivered. In, in my head, I was thinking, okay, about 200,000 Model 3s and about 100,000 Model S and X. This will drop, drop the revenue per car significantly. But remember, this part of this is still leasing. Part of this is still services. So it's not just gonna you know, crater with the Model 3 having a lower selling price around 50,000 versus 80 or 90 for the Model S and X. This is still a total guess. But I'm coming out with about 22.5 billion in auto revenue, more than a double from 2017 next year, just on 200,000 sales of the Model 3. So this this shows to you guys why the Model 3 is such a needle mover for Tesla. Auto revenue more than doubles. This is going to drive more than doubling of Tesla's overall revenue next year. My estimate is 24.5 billion. That's right. They're going to, they already like revenue soaring an incredible amount already from 4 billion to 7 billion to almost 12 billion this year. Next year, it's going to more than double again to 24 and a half billion by my estimates. I have the energy revenue growing from 1.1 billion to 2 billion. Pretty aggressive growth there. But I think with the solar roof launching, with the battery business picking up, um, I think that's going to be kind of in line to what we're going to see even with my linear extrapolation of growing SGNA and R&D with because of these increased sales because I have auto margins bouncing back because they're scaling model 3 production up it looks like Tesla will actually be able if I add a little decimal here be able to produce operating positive operating income next year of 50 million dollars that's right I think Tesla's got a shot at producing positive operating income and earnings per and operating earnings per share in 2018 as long as they don't continue to like, you know, maybe they're gonna have some crazy build out of the Model Y or the semi truck that I just can't even fathom right now that would increase that uh, their expenses and not make them go profitable. But I just wanna show here that the business we have today, I think can start to go profitable next year. And this is with only 200,000 Model 3 sales. 2019, I have Tesla ramping to 500,000 cars delivered, still assuming about 100,000 Model S and X, maybe a little bit more, about 400,000 Model 3s. And personally, I think this could even be a low ball estimate because as I've said before in a ton of my videos, I think the demand for Model 3 is gonna be over 500,000 units per year. It's just all about when Tesla can scale this. Here in this model, I'm assuming they won't even get close to scaling it in 2018. They still won't be able to fully scale in 2019. In 2020, they're able to finally reach equilibrium where they can build as many cars as people wanna buy. So, you know, just a great problem to have where Tesla literally has too many people that wanna buy its cars. With the more Model 3s becoming a bigger part of the sales mix, this 500,000, I have the average selling price dropping to 65,000 or revenue per car dropping to 65, 5,000. That puts the auto revenue at $32.5 billion in 2019. Uh, Energy revenue, I have growing 50% from 2 billion to 3 billion, but that puts the total revenue about 35.5 billion. I have Tesla's auto gross margins hitting that 25%. Now, if you've been following and paying attention to the company, they've been guiding on their conference calls. That 25% is their gross margin target for Model 3. Model S and X have historically been even a little bit higher than that in some periods. So I think there's upside to this 25% number in the long term, but that's where I have Tesla's gross margin in 2019 for the auto business. Energy, let's say it stays flat at 25%. That's gonna lead Tesla to almost 9 billion in gross profit. Even with continued strong growth in SG&A and R&D, it doesn't slow Tesla down. We're looking at a positive operating margin of 5%. This would be really high for any traditional auto company that is producing cars at scale, which leads them to operating, bill operating income of about $2 billion in 2019, $10 in operating earnings per share, even assuming some pretty significant dilution with 189 million shares outstanding. As of the last most recent quarter, there was only... 
167 million shares, diluted outstanding. So I'm assuming, you know, they keep selling stock to fund the business, yada, yada, yada. This is kind of the back of the napkin math that I have for Tesla now. And this isn't to say, okay, you know, you may be saying, okay, their current market cap at $300 per share is $53 billion. So why am I paying $53 billion for a company that's only gonna earn 1.9 billion in two years? That's still a huge multiple. You know, we're still looking at a 27, 28 times price operating earnings multiple two years out for Tesla. But I think it's really important to note here, they're still gonna be in growth mode. I think 2019 is only scratching the surface of the earnings power of this company. You know, there's a lot of costs in here that are being put towards future vehicles like Model Y, like the Semi, like the Tesla network, like the pickup truck, which aren't hitting the income statement yet. So I think you've got to value them at a premium. On a price sales basis, 53 billion doesn't look that crazy. It's about two times next year's sales. And remember, this is an auto company, so its price sales ratio aren't going to be like Netflix, which is seven or eight times. They're always going to be much lower than that. But still, you know, they're only trading about two times, a little over that forward sales, much less than two times 2019 sales. So I don't think the valuation here at 53 billion is crazy crazy at all, especially if you believe that we're still super early in Tesla's growth trajectory. And as I'm pointing out here, as the Model 3 hits scale, I don't see them having to grow their SG&A and R&D expenses that much. And therefore, a lot of this operating leverage is going to start to show up in their business model. This is why I love Tesla. They don't have to build more stores. They can just make the stores they have more efficient by putting more products in them. We're really going to see this flywheel start to turn with the Model 3. I think that start to drive positive operating earnings from the company as soon as 2018. This is all, of course, depending on how fast they decide to ramp up investments in other areas. But I think it's really important to note that the kind of mature piece of the business in 2019 will be able to produce billions in positive earnings, according to my calculations. And that's kind of the backbone of driving my valuation and saying, okay, I think Tesla's actually pretty fairly valued here at about 53 billion. And you can make the case for a lot of upside if they can continue to grow and deliver more than 200,000 Model 3s next year. Anyway, that wraps it up. I'm going to put a link to this in the description. So make sure to check it out. All right, HyperChange, that wraps up my walkthrough of an updated version of Tesla's operating model. I'm going to keep updating this as things change, as the company delivers more cars, they deliver less cars. I think it's really important to have a back of the napkin model for any company that you're going to be invested in if you really want to take things seriously. So that's why I'm trying to walk you guys through my thought process of how I'm valuing Tesla, what I'm expecting, what I think the earnings power of the company could be if they stopped investing and all that kind of good stuff. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. See you guys next time. That wraps it up for this episode of HyperChange. Peace.